What's up? This is MJ Nichols from Internet Money, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a reverse reverb effect. I applied the reverse reverb effect to this uh, tag of mine. Let me play it real quick so you can hear what I'm talking about. MJ on the so you can hear before the vocal came in, there was this rising vocal effect um, that kind of led into the vocal. This is a really cool and easy uh, trick you can do. You can apply it to different things like cymbals, crashes, uh, percussion, melodies, uh, chants. Um, vocals, your tag, really anywhere. So I'm going to break it down really quick and show you how to do it um, and then the different things you can apply afterwards to kind of make it unique and uh, get creative with it. So here I've got a little vocal chant that I got from Exhale. I'll play it real quick so you can hear it. And this is what we're going to be applying the reverse reverb effect to. So the first thing you want to do is make sure whatever you're going to apply the effect to, uh, assign it to a mixer track and then come out, come back to the playlist, uh, make a loop point by hitting the right mouse button back to the mixer and apply a reverb effect. I'm going to use um, Fruity Reverb 2. You can use whatever reverb plugin you want. You can use whatever preset you want. This all comes down to you and what kind of effect you're going for. If you want a really long drawn out reverb or if you want a short reverb, it's, it comes down to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the preset, the venue, and kind of tweak it a little bit. I'm going to raise the wet level all the way up, dry level down to about 75%. I'm going to bring the size up and then the decay time up to about seven seconds. And let's play it real quick so we can hear what it sounds like. Cool, sounds good to me. Uh, once you find the reverb that you wanna work with, um, go back to the playlist. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the sample just so that the very beginning plays. Play it real quick so you can hear it. Once it's cut, uh, go back to the mixer and add Edison to the effect track. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit record, hit play, and then let the reverb completely uh, run its course. And then once it's done, you can just hit stop. Um, and then once it's recorded in Edison, uh, click and drag on this icon here and bring it over to the playlist. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the original vocal uh, drag it back out, um, go back to the mixer, get rid of the fruity reverb that we applied, and let's move the original vocal out of the way. Double click on the uh, Edison recording we just made and assign it to track two, and then also select reverse. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this up a little bit, Bring it to the beginning and then take that original vocal we had and line it up so it starts where this ends. And let's play that really quick. So it didn't quite line up. And what I what I generally like to do is cut the reverse um, portion early. So let's cut it about here bring this back over and I'm going to let them overlap just a little bit because I don't want any dropouts at all. I want it to just be consistent build up. Shift it over just a little bit more. And also depending on how uh, long you want the reverb to draw out, we can move this over and then bring back some of the length of the reverb. Entirely up to you. Uh, what you can also do is duplicate the uh, reverb um, simply by holding down shift and then left clicking and then drag it down. We can make it unique and then drop the pitch down a full octave. Let's send it to track three. You can also do things like uh, delay leading up to the vocal. I'll do it manually, but you could also do it um, with some delay plugins or something like that. I'm gonna crop these. Line it up. And then cut this. Duplicate it. Let me go to the mix 
mixer, um, automate the volume for the first track for the original vocals. Those are just a couple things you can do to make it a little bit more interesting. Really, it's, it all comes down to just what kind of effect you want to achieve. You can add reverse reverb effects to different things in your beat, as I mentioned before, to kind of make things more interesting. You, you can make the background elements like effects or crashes or things like that. Um, really just kind of swell in and out. But yeah, if you guys found this video helpful, consider leaving a like. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, consider doing so. We upload uh, new content daily with the sole purpose of helping you guys improve on your production. If you have any suggestions you'd like to see for future videos, things you want to learn or things you want us to, to talk about or go over, let us know in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Take care.